All right, guys, today we're going to talk about an error message that we see quite a bit at the shop uh, on the 6 7 power strokes, and that is the engine idled C manual uh, code and also uh, the code for exhaust fluid system fault. Uh, so we see this a lot, um, especially in some of the older 6.7s. Typically, this is caused by some type of an emissions uh, fault, whether it's the reductant heater, pressure switch, uh, something to do with the tank, um, you know, some kind of an issue with the, uh, with the SCR system. Uh, or the Knox module or something to that effect. So I'm uh, going to kind of walk you guys through uh, how to get it out of this uh, situation and then uh, kind of go through the steps of what we do to, uh, to fix it and uh, make sure that it doesn't happen again. So um, on this truck here, it's a 2015. Um, I've already scanned it and uh, it's got a few different uh, reductant pressure sensor codes, uh, circuit codes, and uh, reductant purge valve control A code. Um, so, and it's also got a knock sensor code. So uh, we're gonna run through what you've got to do to get it out of the uh, engine idled mode. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is clear these codes out. I've already uh, recorded all these codes in our shop management software. Uh, so we've got a record of everything. Uh, we're going to go ahead and clear all that stuff out. And then uh, we'll go in and look at the data logger. And there's some PIDs and stuff in there that we need to, to monitor. Uh, and there's a drive cycle test that we'll go through and complete. So uh, right now it's just telling me that uh, another message on the dash of the exhaust fluid system fault here. All right, guys, we got the codes cleared out. Uh, you can see the PCM has no code stored, no DTCs present. Uh, so the next thing we got to do is go into our data logger and we'll pull up the PIDs and the PCM that we want to take a look at. So we'll go to modules, PCM, and then we'll clear out the uh, predetermined PIDs that they put in this P in this uh, module. We'll clear all this stuff out. And uh, we'll go in and select the PIDs that we want to look at. So the first thing we want to see is ambient air temperature. And then we want to look at EGT12 temperature, uh, EGT13 temperature, EGT14 temperature, and then we want to go down to the RPM. Uh, RPM, we want to look at reductant, injector, duty cycle. We want reductant tank pressure reductant tank temperature and we'll open that up and verify that uh, EGT 1, 2, 1, 3, and 1, 4 are all below 149 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, once we've got that figured out, the next thing we want to look at is ambient air temperature and reductant tank temperature are, are above 23 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we'll start the truck and raise the EGT-12. This is a wide frame vehicle, so we're looking at EGT-12, uh, and we want to get it to 194 degrees. Uh, if this was a narrow frame, we'd be looking at EGT-13. Uh, but because it's a wide frame vehicle, we're going to look at EGT12. We're going to get it to 194 degrees. And then once we've got it at 194 degrees, we're going to monitor the tank pressure. And we want it to go to 72 PSI. So we're going to monitor EGT12. We're going to take it to, we're going to take the RPMs to between 1500 and 2,000 RPMs. 
and we're just going to hold that there until we get EGT12 up to 194 degrees and then we're going to let it go back to an idle. So we're almost there. Okay, so we've got EGT12 above 194. We're back at idle and we're monitoring the tank pressure to go to 72 PSI. And once that hits 72 PSI uh, in this truck, and it, since it's a wide frame vehicle, we're gonna let it idle and we're going to watch the injector duty cycle PID uh, and it's gonna display a square wave within 90 seconds of the tank pressure increase uh, going to 72 PSI. And then that square wave will last for about 30 seconds and once we get uh, through that square wave, then we're going to raise the engine RPM to between 2,000 and 2,500, and we're going to monitor EGT 1.4 until we get to 437 degrees, or the message in the message center has cleared. And we're still looking for 72 PSI and the reductant tank pressure, so I don't think we're going to get that today. Uh, so we're going to have to do a little bit of further diagnosis and figure out why that tank pressure is not going to 72 PSI. It's either going to be a pump issue, uh, something in the tank, it could be a wiring issue, uh, but we've got to determine what the tank, why the tank pressure is not going to 72 PSI uh, because we can't go any further with the diagnosis until we figure that out. So, all right, so earlier we had uh, an issue with uh, reductant tank uh, purge control valve circuit open uh, and we couldn't get the drive cycle test to complete so we brought the truck in uh, got it on the rack and uh, we did get a code uh, that came back for a P20A0 and uh, in finding that code uh, we're going we're getting ready to go through the trouble tree of uh, figuring out you know what the particulars are and, and what's causing that code so um, in figuring all that out we're going to get under here and take a look at the uh, reductant purge control valve wiring uh, and we're going to go through the steps of uh, figuring out exactly uh, what's causing this code so um, we'll go over here to the truck and uh, take a look at it real quick and uh, show you what we found here. So, um, so going in through here to uh, pull the pigtail off so that we could test the purge valve. And what we found was that we, looks like we had a mouse or some kind of a critter in here chewing on the wiring. Uh, we've got some corrosion in the wires. We've got the purge control valve wiring is completely chewed in half and so we're going to go in and fix this wiring uh, get the approval customer go ahead and fix all that and uh, redo the drive cycle test and see if we can get this customer back on the road we decided to go ahead and remove the def tank from this truck so that we would have easier access to the wiring harness once we got the tank out of the way, we noticed how bad a shape the wiring was, and we decided that rather than trying to repair this harness, we would just go ahead and order a new harness from Ford and do the install. Once we had the new wiring harness installed, we went ahead and checked the quality of the DEF fluid before reinstalling the tank. After verifying that everything there was good, Ryan went ahead and put the tank back up in the vehicle, and then we got back to our testing. So we've replaced the wiring harness for the reductant tank, and heater assembly and we are getting ready to try the drive cycle test for a second time so uh, we've got our PEDs pulled up here on the scan tool and uh, we're getting ready to uh, to start this again so we've got ambient air temperature we've got EGT 13 or 12 13 and 14 we've got the reductant tank temperature and reductant tank pressure We've also got uh, engine RPM and reductant injector duty cycle. 
So we're going to fire this thing up and see what we can make happen here. We've got uh, EGT 1, 2, uh, 1, 3, and 1, 4 all reading under 149 degrees. We've got ambient air temperature and the tank temperature all reading above 23 degrees. So we're going to start this thing up, get the temperature to on EGT 1, 2 above 194 degrees. And then we're going to let it sit in idle and watch for the tank pressure to rise to 72 PSI. All right, raising the RPM between 1500 and 2000. And we're going to let the EGT12 get to 194 degrees. And then we're going to return it back to an idle and watch for the tank pressure come to 72 PSI. Once the tank pressure hits 72 PSI, we're going to watch the injector within 90 seconds. It should have a square wave pattern and that square wave pattern should last approximately 30 seconds. Okay, so we've reached 194 on the EGT12. We're back at idle and the tank pressure is uh, coming up right now to 72 PSI. We've got our injector square wave first pattern here. And within 90 seconds, we should see another square wave pattern on the injector duty cycle. And now we've got our square wave pattern coming in. So we're going to go ahead and raise the RPM to between uh, 2000 and 2500 RPMs when this cycle is over. Should last about 30 seconds. Okay, the square wave is over. We're going to take this RPM to between 2,000 and 2,500. And we're going to wait for either the message to clear on the dash or we're going to see the EGT 1-2 go to, or I'm sorry, 1-4. EGT 1-4 will go to 437 degrees or the message will clear on the dash. A little more than halfway to 437 degrees and we still have the message on the dash. Okay, and uh, we just now got the uh, message on the dash to go away. Uh, so now we have no more messages on the dash. We should be ready to put this thing in drive and uh, see what happens here. So we're gonna take this thing out for a little drive and uh, you can tell that it is not forcing me to idle any longer and uh, we should be in good shape. So while we were out on our test drive, put about 40 miles on this truck and the check engine light came back on. So we scanned it with our IDS again and came back with a code P22A7 for the knock sensor heater sense circuit range or performance. So we're going to dive into this a little bit deeper and see what's causing this code and uh, stay tuned for part two of our diagnosis.